week we're going to start with our first slide. Because I want to ask you, remember last week we talked about, I challenged you and encouraged you, sorry, to obey who? Tried to, this last week to obey God. And you even gave a bunch of suggestions on what you could do to obey God. So, how did you do this week? How did you do uh oh. What do you remember the list that Mr. Williams had written on the board? Yeah. Okay. There were things like be kind, obey your parents. Okay. So does anybody have any stories to share of something they did yeah. this week to obey God? Yeah. All right. Emily? So you did what? I'm sorry. So I, I took a mini one and I got a football. So I mini came up to play football and I did not over. So you were kind. Very good. Kind. I'm talking about being kind of our brothers and sisters. Julia? Oh, can you see them? I know they're a little bit dark, but.
Aubrey, do you know what they're celebrating the Passover? On the, on the sun, on the return to the Father. Well, you're kind of, well, in the fact that this, the firstborn sons were not killed, right? And, and who were they rescued from? God rescued them. The Passover celebrates the Jews being rescued from whom? The Jews. Uh, you know, Julia? No? Is there a girl that knows? No. Do you know Grace? Yes, from the Egyptians. Very good. Okay. So let's see. I, Grace, why don't you stand up? And you're going to pick a boy this time around, okay, for this question. Who ruled the Jews? Who is the government that ruled the Jews during Jesus' time? So it's not the Egyptians, remember? So, who during Jesus' time on earth were the Jews wanting to be rescued from this time? So, you've got a college boy, Grace. The Romans. Ah, that's right, the Romans. Okay, very good. You may stand up, Joel. And let's see. How or what did the Jews think that Jesus would do to save them? What were the Jews hoping for that Jesus would do? So, call the girl who hasn't answered yet, Joel. Quickly. Let's do Adam. Okay. Adam, you haven't answered yet, right? No, okay. I have me. What, did, what were the Jews hoping that Jesus would do to rescue them? Um, That's right. That, they, that Jesus would somehow get rid of the Romans and rescue them in that way. Very good. Okay, Adam, will you stand up? Please, guys. Uh, two more to go. How did the Pharisees feel about Jesus? This is our last week lesson. So, Adam, you need to call him a boy. How did the Pharisees feel about Jesus? Are you ready, girls? Start with me. 
Jesus lived a sinless life. Good boys. Died on the cross. And then everybody and rose from the dead. Okay, got the idea? Now this time we're going to do the opposite. Okay, so keep standing. So now boys, you're going to fill in the first blank. Girls, the second blank. And who do you think they're going to have to do the third blank? Jesus lived a sinless life. Girls died on the cross. Everybody and rose from the dead. Good job. Please sit down. So remember we talked last week that, that if somebody says to you, well, what did Jesus do? There's your answer right there. Died or lived a sinless life. Died and rose again. That's the gospel all in one answer. Well, let's talk about where we're at. First of all, our story takes place today in a town where everybody was coming to to celebrate what again? Passover. Passover. Do you know what town or city it was? Jerusalem. Very good. Jerusalem, which is right here. Now, Jerusalem was very crowded at this time because everybody was coming to celebrate Passover. And it was an exciting time, but let's talk for a minute. If it was the, what time of Jesus' life have we been talking about? Do you know what time of Jesus' life we've been talking about, Abigail? It's the, it's the last week before he dies. Right, it's the last week before he dies. Now, Mr. Ann, could you show the next slide for me, please? <laughs> oh, now I show you that picture. Yeah. What does that remind you of? Remember. When you hear me use the word remember, I just want you to put your finger up just like the emoji is. Okay? And then you just put it right back down here. So when I say remember, what are you going to do? Because there's going to be a lot in this lesson that we need to remember. Good. So you got it. Very good. Okay. Well, we celebrate Thanksgiving to remember what? Why do we have Thanksgiving? Because it's good, yes, that's true, but there is a celebration of what, Noah? Right? It's a celebration to remember the pilgrims. Wow, I just here to remember the pilgrims and the Indians and their first celebration of their thankfulness to God for getting the pilgrims through the winter, right? So we have a reason as to why we celebrate. Let's go to the next slide, Ms. Rita. Now, if I show you this, you're going to know what celebration that is, right? <laughs>
during that time. You guys are forgetting. You're not remembering. Why we, why we have this special time of the Lord's Supper and Communion. And that's what our lesson is going to be about today. In fact, it's so important. Let's go to the next time, Mr. Reed. It's so important that it's mentioned in all four Gospels. And you know them now, right? What are they?
He wanted to celebrate with his very special friends. Who were they? And we call them the disciples. Disciples. Do you know how many there were? Twelve. Twelve. Wow. So he wanted to celebrate and with his very special friends, but remember, Jesus really didn't have a home when he was an adult. And so Jesus said, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where did we go? Did you hear what did you hear what Peter said? Say it again. Where did we go? Go into the city to a man with a water pitcher and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So go tell him that. Okay, so, so Peter and John, let me go back to your chair. You walked and did what Jesus said. Hold on just a minute. And Macy, would you read the verse, please? Do. They would recline. 
And so Jesus was reclining at the table, and while he was at the table, he made a very interesting statement. He, again, predicted the future. And he said, one of you will betray me. One of you will turn on me. And the disciples said, what? They all got really worried. Okay, now, if, if you heard Jesus say that, what would your faces look like? <gasps> right? What? We're going to betray you? No, we love you, Jesus. But Jesus knew, and this is something I really want you to think about. Jesus knew the future. He was predicting it. He knew he was going to suffer. He knew he was going to die. And yet Jesus still but, remember we talked about how he's equally God, equally man. man? The God side of him knew he had to do, do it and, and obey God. But how do you think the man side of him felt? Like, I don't think so. Yeah. You, I mean, he was fully man. And do you want to suffer? Do you want to die? No. No, I, there was a part of him that did not want to. That was the man part. But, still, obey. Well, while he was at the table... He did something very different that had never been done before at, at the Passover feast. And he took, he, uh, he took the bread, okay, and he wanted to give the disciples something to remember. Something to remember. Now, they for, for many, many years, they'd celebrated the past of Passover being rescued. Now Jesus is saying, something's going to happen very soon that I never want you to forget. I always want you to yeah. remember. And so this is what he did. So it said, while, I'm going to read, the, I'm going to actually read what the Bible says. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. What an example, right? Jesus set the example of how we give thanks and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. Saying, take and eat. This is my body. Now, we're talking about that in a minute, right? Then he took the cup, which would have been probably with wine. We do juice at our church. He took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, the disciples, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Okay. Let's talk about that for a minute. Remember that picture we saw when we, of the word the Lord's Supper and Communion? Okay. When Jesus broke the bread, it probably would have been more like bread, flat bread. When he broke the bread and said, this is my body, was he really saying, here's a part of me, Here's my leg, here's my arm, here's my foot. No, no, no. Is that what he was saying? Not at all. He was saying, this is like a symbol to help you remember how my body, you saw Mr. Williams break it, how my body was broken for you. What's that mean that his body was broken? What does that mean? What does that mean? You guys felt so good about answering. Adam, what does it mean? Yes, and when his body was broken, it was very, very hurt, wasn't it? They were not kind to him, and he knew that was going to happen. And so he said, when you now celebrate what, what we call the Lord's Supper, communion, I want you to eat this bread and remember my body. I did this for you, for love, out of love for you. And he said, what is this supposed to represent or be a symbol of? Really? It's really? It's like now it's just when, when we celebrate this in church to remember what Jesus suffered, are we really drinking blood? No. Is it really Jesus' blood? No. It's a symbol to help us remember. In fact, the Bible says that remember Jesus was saying that my blood that was poured out for you. Okay. Pretend you're pouring something. Is that just like a little little trickle when you get a cut? No. no. Jesus says, my blood is poured out for you. I think we often think about that, do we? Now remember, the disciples, it hadn't happened yet. But Jesus is saying, I'm going to do this because I love you. And when you remember how
how God rescued you from Egypt. Good job, Lily. When you remember how God rescued you from Egypt, I want you to also remember a new event of how I die for you. I'm going to suffer for you because I love you so much. Go to the next slide, Mr. Edith. And today, 2,000 plus years later, we are still remembering this in our church. We are still, once a month, our church has communion, or what we call the Lord's Table, to remember what Jesus did. Now, I put this up here for you to see. The Old Covenant is what God had with, with the Jews before Jesus died. Now, who's dying there? Uh, Wesley, can you see what's on that altar? A lamb. Yeah, a lamb. And like Lily said, it had to be a perfect lamb, right? So, could that lamb take away people's sins? No. Absolutely not. The lamb could temporarily offer, uh, be, a, be an acceptance of a gift to offer for Jesus to offer forgiveness for their sins, but it could never take away. It's very temporary, not lasting. And so the people had to offer it again and again and again. But they knew that this lamb was a picture of who that was coming later? Jesus. Jesus, the Messiah. So when Jesus died, it's no longer old. What's the opposite of old? New. It's a new covenant. We are still in that new covenant. And we Jesus on the cross there, can't you? Now we know that Jesus died and then what? Rose. Rose again. But when we celebrate communion or the Lord's Supper, we are remembering what he suffered for us. Good job, Nancy. What he suffered for us on the cross. Because in the New Covenant, do you know, Aubrey, that anyone who asks Jesus to be their Savior Ask Jesus to forgive them of their sins. The new covenant was saying, anyone who does that can go where when they die? To heaven. To heaven. That because Jesus was perfect, but unlike a lamb, he was a person that was perfect. And because his blood was poured out and his what? Body was broken. Anyone who believes can, ask, can know Jesus as their Savior and have a home in Boys and girls, when we have communion in church, do you think it's a silly time? No. It's to be a very serious time. Can everybody, should everybody take communion? Is, ev is everybody... Everybody? to take communion. Who should be the ones taking communion and remembering Jesus' death? The ones who believe in Jesus. Very good. Anyone, anyone, it doesn't matter whether you live in Ohio or Africa or Australia, it doesn't matter that at all. What matters is who has asked Jesus to be in to be their Lord and Savior and come into their heart. Anyone who has done that and understands what Jesus has done for them, they can be a part of communion. And when you get a little older, usually at our church, we want to make sure you understand. So uh, they usually have a certain age that you can and take communion, but you have to, first of all, ask Jesus to be your Savior. So, when you start doing this, and you know that you've asked Jesus in your heart, I want you to remember that as we take your job, I want as we celebrate communion, we are celebrating how much love Jesus had for us, for you and for me. He loved us so much that he was willing to suffer for us. Does anybody have any questions about it? You know there's a lot to cover today. Any questions, any thoughts? You know, 
One thing that I kind of think is really kind of cool is just as they had to offer the Passover lamb, in the same way, Jesus is that same kind of lamb because when we ask Jesus to be our Savior, God passes over us and we will no longer have to, we, will, we know that we won't go to hell. We will be in heaven with Jesus. He passes over us and allows us to be in heaven because of Jesus' blood. So it is the lamb, but he's the final sacrifice. Do you offer sacrifices at your house? No. No. No, no I don't either. Because who was the final sacrifice? Jesus. Jesus. Okay, everybody see that? Let's pray and we'll do our verse. Practice our verse together. And you know, boys and girls, that if there is anyone here who has more questions about what it means to know Jesus as your Savior, we would love to show you and tell you what that means. Because he died for you too. Let's talk to Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the love that you have for us, that you sent your son Jesus to die, and that he is the final sacrifice. And Lord, we just can't understand that love, but we are grateful for it. And I pray that if anybody is here who does not know you as Savior, that they would not be afraid to ask today what that means. They would talk to a grown-up today. Lord, we thank you again for just the amazing goodness and love you have for us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to go to the first slide. Now, I told you I would leave some words out, okay? And I made these. I only, do you see how many blanks there are? How many blanks are there? Four. Four, okay. So this week I only left out four, but next week I'm going to leave out six. Okay? So why don't you stay standing? I know you've been sitting a long time. And we'll read it through together. I am not going to say the blank. So you guys have to fill that blank in. And maybe, maybe Mr. Williams will help you. You ready? And he found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient to death. Even death on a cross. Very good. Philippians 2. Okay, one more time. One more time. Ready? I want you to know this. This is a great verse. Here we go. And be 